You know, this church right here, the building itself, has been standing since 1896. A lot of people wish this old building be tore down. It's not beautiful. It's not big anymore. Big guys don't come by here. Just a handful of people. Hmm. But if it wouldn't have been for this lighthouse, I wonder what kind of shape this community would be in today. Moses led God's children Forty years he led them Through the cold Through the night Though they said let's turn back Moses said keep going Canaan land is just inside There will be no sorrow there And that tomorrow we will be there by and by flowing there is where I'm going Canaan land is just inside Valleys, though we climb high mountains, we must not give up the fight. We must be like Moses, we must keep on going. Cater land. Is just inside. There will be no sorrow there, and that tomorrow we will be there by and by. And milk and honey flow in there. Is where I'm going. Canaan land is just inside. There will be no sorrow there. In that tomorrow we will be there by and by milk and honey flowing there is where I'm going Canaan land is just inside milk and honey flowing there is where I'm going, Canaan land is just inside. Amen. Hallelujah. 
milk and honey flowing. That's what I like. You know, I like to go to a buffet to eat. And it's not because I, every time I want more than just one plate. But I want the availability if I do decide that I want that. Huh? I don't want to be limited just to a little bit of God. I want the opportunity to have all that I want. Am I the only one that's that way? I guess so. Huh? Everybody got real quiet on that. Man. I hear you, boy. No, they just go up there and get them one little bitty McDonald hamburger, you know, satisfied. <laughs> Amen. Brother Michael, what about opening us up in prayer, if you don't mind? Uh, talk to Brother Glenn McIntyre today, and um, he has asked for prayer. And um, him and Sister Barbara, Sister Barbara's facing some dementia trouble. Uh, Brother Glenn, I believe, is 90% in a wheelchair now at this time. Uh, but they had went by and picked up Sister Barbara and all the grandkids and the great grand youngins and all that was over there today. And so, you know, having a good time. But they asked to be remembered. Brother Ken Gregg called me when I got out of church last night. And uh, he's having some troubles and issues and uh, having some water build up around his lungs. And uh, he's uh, asking for prayer. Continue to remember Brother Michael. Uh, we believe that this is going to be the week. They're just going to have to let him go and uh, come out of there fired up, ready to run a race without being haltered or slowed down. Uh, and I'm sure that you have your own request, uh, Brother uh, Brother Green over in South Carolina. You know, we want to remember him. And uh, these things, tomorrow is Easter. Going to be a lot of people in the church churches tomorrow. Pray that God will move on their lives. You know, that's a lot of times you're going to see them. I heard one preacher stand up one time and say, uh, happy Christmas, I mean, Happy Easter and Merry Christmas because I won't see you again until Christmas time. So, you know, uh, if if they come in tomorrow, the Bible says that a sinner cannot sit in the congregation of the righteous. So pray that the people who come in tomorrow and leave changed, you know, shook up in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's uh, purpose in our hearts that from this moment on, it's not just the same old church. We're going to make a difference in somebody's lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Michael. Got somebody else? Right. He's been whooping them for about two months now. They've tried to kill him off, and he just won't go that way. Remember Mr. Henry. He was, uh, uh, I guess, to Katie's mother, he was like a dad to, to her.
for he is Lord. Yes, he is Lord. He has risen from the dead and he is Lord. And every knee shall bow Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, for He is Lord, oh, He is Lord, He has risen from the dead he is Lord and every knee shall bow and every tongue confess oh that Jesus Christ is Lord tried most everything and I'm happy now to say there's nothing like religion in a good old fashioned way walking in the old time way and I want this world to know that I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord than anything I know I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord than anything I know there's nothing like an old time Christian with a Christian love to show Walking in the grand old highway, telling everywhere I go that I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord or anything I know. There are things I'd like to be as the journey I pursue. I've longed to be a leader like a mortal man would do. I'd like to be a millionaire with a million to bestow. But I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord than anything I know. I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord than anything I know. Nothing like an old time Christian with a Christian love to show. Walking in the grand old highway, telling everywhere I go that I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord than anything I know. Since I got right, I sing, I pray, and shout. All my burdens have been lifted since the Savior brought me out. I'm gonna tell this world, both far and near, as I travel here below, that I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord than anything I know. I'd rather 
love me an old time Christian lower than anything I know. Nothing like an old time Christian with a Christian love to show. Walking in the grand old highway, telling everywhere I go that I'd rather be an old time Christian low anything I know. All the world is bright since I got right. I sing, I pray, and shout. All my burdens have been lifted since the Savior brought me out. I'll tell the world, both far and near, as I travel here below, that I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord than anything I know. I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord than anything I know. There's nothing like an old time Christian with a Christian love to show. Walking in a grand old highway and telling everywhere I go that I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord than anything I know. An old time Christian Lord than anything I know. There's nothing like an old time Christian with a Christian love to show. Walking in the grand old highway, telling everywhere I go that I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord than anything I know. I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord than anything I know. got a song they want to do tonight or a testimony I like testimonies that's right the blood of the lamb I do want to thank all the men for coming out today and building that wall I went over there before church and looked at it it looks good I don't think y'all goofed up not the first time on it I think you all passed now we just got to get somebody to, to pay off on it right Y'all done a fantastic job. I appreciate it. I appreciate y'all not having to have me there to get the job done. Amen.
shall hear the call from heaven's portal. Come home, my child, it's the last mile you must try. I fall asleep and wait. New heaven sheltered safe within the arms of God. So let the storms rage high, the dark clouds rise, they won't worry me for. mic on? Yeah. Well, I took a ride one day just to pass the time away down the street of the town where I was born. Every street on every corner, another memory unwind, and these thoughts seem to echo in my mind. Where would I be if it had? For Jesus, where would I be if there had been a cross? Some other fate would seal my doom, if not for the blood of an empty tomb, and I still. Be lonely, wretched and lost As I beheld familiar faces The light in the song How I wonder where the other have all gone and did they find peace of mind that all men hope to find 
and these thoughts seem to echo in my mind. Where would I be if it hadn't been for Jesus? Where would I be if it hadn't been a cross? Some other fate would seal my doom if not for the blood and empty tomb. I'd still be lonely. For Jesus, where would I be if there had been a cross? Some other fate would see my doom if not for the blood and empty tomb, and I still be lonely. Wretched and long, I'd still be lonely. Wretched and long. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Have you ever thought about where you would be if it hadn't been for Jesus? Right. A lot of people ask, can you remember the time? Do you remember the place? Yeah. Have you ever wondered? Have you ever thought about where you would be? Well, I can tell you, he found me in a suicide attempt. So I can tell you where I would be. Right. He saved me and filled me with the Holy Ghost in a suicide attempt. I was that close to plunging into the flames of hell but for some reason far and on beyond my finite comprehension he saw something that he counted and deemed worthy cause right and brother I believe that he was looking for his reflection. Right. And old brother Michael Pike. I believe that he was looking for his reflection in brother Bob McKinney and brother Matthew Weaver, brother Adam Clark, Thomas Holt. You heard the past couple nights, it's the man in the mirror that you've got to overcome the man in the mirror that you've got to defeat because you've heard of who comes back in that reflection right. if you've not defeated the man in the mirror the reflection's going to come back as Beelzebub that's what you've heard and that's right down the gun barrel. But Jesus is looking for his reflection. That's right. The first of many brethren. He's looking for his reflection in us. When we get to the place to where we can look in the mirror, and Bill Beelzebub does not protrude, and that fleshly man does not protrude anymore. But that inner man has came out and taken over and there's been a total reversal. That inner man has protruded and come out and that outer man has been swallowed up. Then the reflection will come back right. of that, that of the first of many brethren. 
Praise God. And that's what we're looking for. That's what we're striving for. Brother Greg, let's try one more here. Verse from this, uh, <clears throat> I believe it's in D also. <laughs> Just suppose God searched through heaven Couldn't find one willing to be The supreme sacrifice that was needed to buy eternal life for you and me oh had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary had it not been for the old road that For that man who we call Jesus, hallelujah, then forever my soul would be lost. Just listen to the words. I'm so glad he was willing to drink this bitter cup. Though he prayed, Father, let it pass for me. I'm so glad he didn't call 10,000 angels. Come down and pull these awful nails, they torment me. Oh, had it not been for the place called Calvary, hallelujah, had it not been for the old road it crossed, had it not been for that man we called Jesus. And forever my soul will be lost Had it not been for the place called Calvary Sing it with me Had it not been for the old rugged Oh, had it not been for the man who we call Jesus, then forever my soul would be lost, and then forever. God, praise God. Amen. Had it not been for the old rugged cross. Anybody like to pray anything? Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you. 
anyone else? Amen. I've just got one thing to say. Jesus, light him up with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? I'm giving you men an opportunity. I never intended to preach the first service of this, much less every night of it. I wanted you young men to do it, like y'all built that wall over there today. It gave me time to lay back. Where you been this week? Come dragging in, now you're sitting on a second bench. Man, I sure is good to have you. Gonna be here in the morning? You know, we're eating in the morning, huh? Uh, here, yeah. You gonna pray about it? It'd be like that preacher. He went in and told his wife, he said, This, these people coming and, and uh. Offered him a job pastoring church, going to pay a million dollars a year. He said, I need to go in home and pray about that first before I tell you yes. He went home and uh, his wife said, what's going on? He said, we just got offered a job pastoring church for a million dollars a year. While I go pray, you start packing. <laughs> huh? Amen. No dancer had already came. This week is the, the week of Easter. Ever how you look at it, the Passover, uh, eating of the lamb, the body of the lamb, maybe that's what we've been trying to preach a little bit this week is to eat the whole lamb. The Bible said that when uh, under the, the law, that when you cook the whole lamb and if your family couldn't eat all of the lamb, then you would go out and invite your neighbors and bring them in, and you would all eat of the whole lamb to cure every disease there is. And this week, we have tried to emphasize on eating everything of God that you could possibly partake in and not leaving anything out. This week started on uh, Sunday. Uh, uh, if you was living under the law, and you know the Bible said it was a schoolmaster up until the point that Jesus Christ came, and then you know Apostle Paul saying, you know, once we have Christ, then we ought to know better than have to need a schoolmaster. It's not that it's not important. It's just you ought to be so far above that you shouldn't have to go back to it. But this was the week of unleavened bread. You were supposed to take everything that had leaven in your house and remove it out of your house where you would not even be tempted to eat anything that was leavened. You know what leaven is? It's what causes it to rise. It's the yeast that's in it. It's what causes your bread to, to take hold and to rise. But what we have found out is that the people have taken of God unworthy and have caused the leaven to become uh, the unleavened, the pure and the holy, the righteous, the showbread of God to become unleavened, to, to become leaven, mixing in. We go right back to the same thing that we was at uh, last night and the night before that we are not taking the fullness of God we're only taking part of it, trying to mix it with the world, and it's not beneficial to the curing of the body. If you're going to take part in God and you want your body to be healed, you got to eat the whole Lamb of God. If you want to have a, a perfected mind, you got to eat all of God. You can't just eat a little bit of it and throw it away because if you throw any part of God away, it's a waste. Huh? And you're not fit, the Bible says, you're not fit for the kingdom of God to once tasted of it and seen that he was precious and look back and go into a different direction. We find ourselves unworthy to partake in God because we refuse to take all of God. I think it again, and I've said this two nights in a row and one more time. 
religion. I was thinking about that song a while ago as we were singing, uh, Lord, uh, uh, I, I like that old time religion. I like that, that old way because I want you to know something, what I've seen religious things of lately. Religion has hidden the cross. It's hidden God. It's took the crucifixion out and tried to make God of none effect. But the power of God is trying to come back on the scene in the fullness of authority and power one more time like it hasn't been seen in a while. Huh? Galatians chapter five. Galatians chapter five. It's right before Ephesians. Right after 2 Corinthians and right before Ephesians. You know what you find when you get into Ephesians? The elect of God. This is a what will get you into being part of the elect of God. Now, like I said this week, to yesterday was Good Friday. Today is the Shabbat or the Sabbath. Tomorrow in the in the law is a is a high holy day. It, it's it's more than than just a holy day. It's a high holy day. It's a time that that it, it, that the people that are under the law and, and we all got friends that's under that. But the Bible said that we're no longer under these kind of things. We're not part of the rudiments of the world. We're not part of the traditions of the world. We need to go on into perfection, not laying again the foundation of dead works. But we need to reach to the point that we're eating the fullness of God. Everything there is about Him. You know, I shouldn't need prayer. I should never be sick. Whoo, that's bad this week. Huh? I preach sick every night this week. Huh? I just be honest with you, church. I preached every night this week sick. I didn't even know how I was going to hold my head up. You know what time I went to bed last night? At 4 o'clock this afternoon. I laid down till 5 o'clock and got up and took a shower. This old body, it's fighting every time you go to do good, evil is present. You know, so what are you going to do? We're going to stand in the liberty where God has set us and made us free and not per, to look on this other thing but walk into a perfection of God if I don't never have to close my eyes again. Huh? We still be fresh in God. Now, chapter 5 of Galatians. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Huh? What is bondage? Something that binds you down. You can't be happy in God because you're bound down in traditions. You're bound down in laws. You're bound down in ordinances. You can't find freedom. You can't find happiness. You can't find relief anywhere because you're so worried about the don't do's and the don't this and the don't that. Instead of being at liberty with Jesus, if we would find ourselves set free at liberty, you would never get caught up in the don't do's because you won't want to do them. Huh? You know why a person cusses? Because they got cussing in them. You know why they drink? Because they got an alcohol demon. You know why they have habits? Because they got habits. If you, uh, if you don't uh, uh, have something within you, you're not going to let it out. If it's not there from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. It's not what entereth in that defiles the temple of God, but what proceeds out of it. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. If you're under the law and you are only doing things because of what the law says, it has not profited you one ounce. If you're coming to church just to be seen because mom and daddy told you you needed to go to church, it's not profiting you one bit of good. If you're going to Sunday school just because you was raised to go to Sunday school, it's not doing you any good. If you're just going out there through the motions and not entangled up in God, it's not doing you any bit of good. You're in bondage to 
the church. You're in bondage to Sunday school. You're in bondage to a law. You're in bondage to a tradition. And you cannot find peace with God if you always feel like you're being pressured. Huh? How many in here enjoy their job? Yeah. yeah he enjoys his job because right now he's working for God. That's all he's doing. Now listen. You don't enjoy your job. Why? Got to be there at a certain time in the morning. I got to keep up with the paperwork. I can't drive too long. I, I, I'm an hour away from home and they got me bound down on the other side of Atlanta and I can't get out and I got to lay in that truck all night long. We got things that, that pull us down and weight us down and it causes misery in our life. That's the same thing in religion. We allow religious ordinances to weight us down and we cannot be happy in God because that we're weighted down with all the traditions and the things that's got us entangled. Huh? We can't find liberty. If we could find liberty, we could find peace. And if we could find peace, we'd have happiness. Huh? Verse 3, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. If you want to eat part of it, you've got to do all of it. Huh? If you have a minister that you're under, you like, you grew up under them, and they said to wear your britches long, and wear your shirts buttoned all the way up and have long sleeves on. Do you know that you could wear the long breeches? You could wear the sleeves all the way down and unbutton the top of your button and you would be guilty because you didn't do everything that that preacher had taught you to do because you're tied up in traditions anyway. You're tied up in ordinances anyway. You don't have a spirit of holiness. You've got a doctrine of holiness. And that is what will separate you from God. Not saying that the doctrine's wrong. Y'all get that right. I'm just saying that if you are doing part of it, but you're not doing all of it, you are dishonoring what they said. I used to tell people all the time, boy, my daddy, he'd head people all the time, where do you go to church? Oh, we go down to Brother Bob McKinney's church. You catch them up the street in a pair of short britches. You catch them and look in all kind of ways and everything. And I tell them, I said, don't dare tell them that you're part of Bob McKinney's people. Go tell them you're part of Satan's tribe because if you don't honor him with what he preaches, you lie about it. Huh? Because we don't do the fullness of it. If you're going to be under a bondage, you've got to be under all of it. If you're going to be free, you've got to be free. If you're going to have peace and happy and joy and love, you've got to get rid of the rudiments of the world. It's easy to transgress without cussing. Huh? It's easy to sin without considering yourself to be a sinner. Huh? It's easy to get called up and doing some foolish things without being in the world to do them. Verse 4, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. If you feel like you're justified by the law, grace has not done you any good. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God what? Forbid. Grace is there to a point that when you find out that 
you're in sin and you decide that you're lost and you need a Savior and you come to God, that grace is sufficient for then. It's not a continuation for you to walk in contrary of the fullness of God. You've got to eat all of God, all of this word, every bit of it, from the Old Testament past the New Testament, even to them pages that's in the back that's blank. Start writing them. How are you going to do that? By living the word. Christ is becoming no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ, in that anointed word, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Now, you remember a while ago I said if you're coming to church because you were made to, you're not doing any good. If you're coming to church because you want somebody to see you all dressed up, spiffed up, and looking like a million-dollar minister, you're not doing any good. But if you're coming to learn the Word of God, to live a more perfect life, to have more freedom in your life, that your children might be saved, that your wife might be saved, that your household might be delivered, that you don't have to be sick and in distress and brokenhearted and destroyed and pain and aggravation and all these things. If you're coming for the purity of God, God is coming to give you purity and the fullness of the Godhead because you're willing to eat all of it. You did run well. This is the verse I wanted to get to. You did run well. You started off in a good thing. How many remember the first time that you ever cried your eyes out in an altar? Sincere. Not, not because mama told you to, daddy told you to, the preacher come back and grabbed you and shook you around. But there was something that was on the inside of you and it was pulling you, it was tugging you and it didn't matter to me if you was out there on the side of the road uh, like old brother Jake Davis and you got down in an old pinted knot tree somewhere and you began to cry out to God in the rain. Whatever it took, do you remember that first time that you ever done that? You was the most perfect person. You was the closest to God than you had ever been in your life because you was the most humble. You had found a freedom. You had found a place of love. You had found a place that God was pleased with. And I want to know something. From that time till now, what has hindered you to keep from going on the road? What has hindered you and slowed you down? What has caused you to give up? What has caused you to turn away? What has caused you not to want God anymore? What's caused you to give up on the church what's caused you to give up on the people who's hindered you what has hindered you what has took this out of your heart what has took this out of your eyesight what has took this out of your mind huh what preacher hindered you from finding God get rid of that devil if it's Greg McKinney get rid of him if I'm hindering then I don't need to be doing that. You did run well, but who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Well, you just got to sin a little bit every day. That lying devil. Huh? The Bible said you can't sin. His seed remains in you. Huh? Why can't you sin? You don't want to sin. You don't try to sin. You don't go out there to see if you can do it or not. It's not there. It's not in you. Who's hindered you? That lying preacher? Who told you? Who? You know, the Bible said that, that John the Baptist looked down there and he said, you generation of vipers. He called them snakes. He said, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Who told you not to flee from the wrath to come. You're the children of God. Who's told you it's going to be okay? Who's told you you could be slacking God? Who's told you to eat part of the lamb and don't eat it all? Who's hindered you? 
Why are we still not in perfection? Why are we still not put on immortality? Why have we not yet been translated? Why have we not been transformed? Why have we not said, oh grave, where's your victory, oh death? Where's your sting, oh grace? Where's your victory at? Who's lied? You better hurry up and get you a grave plot. You better go out there and get you some funeral insurance. You don't want to leave your family in a mess. Don't give no funeral home directors no money. My God, if I leave this world, take me out, throw me on a bonfire, just burn up this stinking mess. It ain't no good anyway. Oh, Brother Greg, you would be burned up in a heartbeat. What in the world is this body going to do? You want it to be resurrected from the dead? It's got pain. It's got aggravations. It's got troubles. I want the new body. And you want to know something? I want it before I change dimensions. Huh? I want it now. Tomorrow's Easter dinner. You can wait next week and see if there's anything left if you want to. Huh? You can wait till next week. Come, don't worry about coming to church tomorrow and then go down there and try to fellowship with them on Easter dinner. You can wait till next week, and if there's anything left, you're more than welcome to have it. That's exactly what that you're telling God when you say that you're going to go by the way of the grave, that you can't wait till that day comes, that you don't want the fullness of God. You're not interested in everything of God. I'm just going to wait and pie past what God has given us today. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. I think it was R. W. Shambach. Had a whole line of people in wheelchairs in his young day. He was walking by and grabbing them by the hand. Rise and walk in the name of Jesus. Rise and walk in the name of Jesus. Snatching them out of them wheelchairs. He come upon one, the person shoved their wheelchair back, said, don't touch me, I get a check. Huh? Up there in line. Up there hindering somebody else from finding God. Up there when, when they just want to put on a show, but when it comes to the reality, then they did not want the fullness of God. They rather have the world than they had to get out and do something for God. Huh? I'm going to ask you now. What do you want? Are you satisfied with the way it's gone for the last 50, 60 years? Generation period of time has gone by since Brother Branham walked off his scene. I'm 48 years old. That's a generation period of time. Miracles have began to cease. Miracles have gone away. You just see a few things sporadic every once in a while. Who hindered us from going on with God? Just because one man went off to the scene, why in the world are we in that condition today? Why do we stay in that? Why are we satisfied with where we're at when there's so much more to God? Huh? Now you can have that big dinner tomorrow or you can wait and hope there's something left later on down the road. Huh? I made a statement. I said, bring the sick, the lame, the halt, the death, the dumb, the dead, and let's vindicate God's word. Anybody tell anybody sick to come out and let's try it out? You was out there in the world. Did you think that I was joking? Did you think that I was kidding? I'm tired of playing around. I'm tired of people dying. I'm tired of my friends going in the graveyard. Me and, my, me and my buddy was together just a few minutes while ago and we was talking to somebody. I said, there's only me and him left now. Everybody else is about going out there and went in the grave at 45, 46, 47, 48 years old. Huh? My friends, the ones that I grew up with. Buried, dead, gone. I'm sick of what Satan is trying to take away from the children of God. Who are the children of God, Brother Greg? Everyone that I remit their sins. Huh? 
Did not the Bible said that we have the power to remit sins or to retain them? Yeah. A lot of people want to retain sins. Well, I just don't like that person. I choose to remit. Right. I choose to set them free. I choose not to hold anything against them. I choose for them to live and not die. I choose them to be made whole and not, and not be sick. I choose them to be wealthy and not poor. I choose the very best for the children of the Almighty God. Why settle for something less? What hinders us from going on into perfection with God? Who hinders us? Not what, who? Who? Oh, Brother Michael said it a while ago. Look in that mirror. Is it us hindering our own selves? What is it that we like so much more than we do God? Why do we want to stay in the same position? Why do we want to stay sick? Why do we want to stay poor? Why do we want to stay down and out? Why do we want to stay bitter? Why do we want to stay sad? Why do we want to stay transfixed on what the world is doing and not what God is doing? Why are we so happy with the evil things and so displeased with the good things? You know why I like Sunday school? It teaches you. I sit here and preach all day long. Preacher's been preaching 2,000 years. But where's the teachers at? Who's teaching me how to live what's being preached? We've all heard the message of the translation of the body. Who's taught us how to do it? Starting with Greg. Who has taught us how to walk into perfection? Who has taught us how to cross dimensions? Who's taught us how to go beyond the curtain of time? How do you learn these things? By studying, by seeking, by searching. You uh, ladies get a recipe and you cook a cake and it ain't no good. Do you keep cooking that same cake? Does she, Brother Matthew? What do you do? You go back first thing and check the recipe, see if you've made the right ingredients. Did you put in some imitation in there that you weren't supposed to be putting in there? Did you add too much salt? Did you add too much sugar? Did you add not enough sugar? Did you add the right kind of flour? Did you get a good egg? Was the egg spoiled? Somebody, yeah, did you forget the egg? Did you use imitation butter? Did you use the real deal? What made that not to the perfect taste that it could have been? And did you keep doing it over and over and over again, or did you seek out what makes it the best? Huh? Thank you, Jesus. We was over in Alabama one time this preacher and I was a young man this preacher took me he said man we going up here to this restaurant brother Greg they got the best pecan pie you ever put in your mouth whoo that man didn't know but I love pecan pie I have been introduced to the best huh I have been introduced to the best and I went down there with him and they brought out the pecan pie and I put it in my mouth. He said, what do you think, brother? I said, mm, brother, I think it's pretty good, but you need to come on over to Georgia and find my grandmother's because she puts this one to shame. My grandmother been dead about two years, done cross dimensions about two years. I walked in the house one day and I opened up the refrigerator and there was a pecan pie in the refrigerator. Well, at that time, Aunt Shine was still on this side of the world, and she would uh, always would make me a pecan pie and send it to me. I said, well, Aunt Shine done looking after me. I reached in that thing, and I cut me a slab of it, and I took a bite of that pecan pie, and I said, that's Granny's. Granny done come back across dimensions and cooked me a pecan pie. 
so much I believed it. I said, thank you, Granny. I love you. I know that there was nothing that could separate your love from my love. Huh? You know what I found out later? My mama had found Granny's recipe. She had, my mother never made pecan pies like my grandmother did, but when she found the original recipe, it was perfect. It was perfect. When we can find the original recipe in God, it is perfect. Huh? Why are we having troubles in our Christian walk with God? We're not using the original recipe. We're still using some imitation, and imitation doesn't taste good. Huh? It won't get the job done. It's not real biscuits. It's store-bought, and store-bought religion will just get you enough of hell to let you bust it wide open. Huh? The original seed. With what? Spoken word. You did run well. Verse 7. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. If you just get a little bit of the word of God and a whole lot of the preacher it leaveneth what God is trying to do. This is why Dad always told us, you read the Scriptures and make sure that I'm telling you right. You study for yourself. Study to show yourself approved a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. A little leaven, leaveneth the whole lump, I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. Who's that? That's that Sunday morning, Sunday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, any other night preacher that's down there that's not telling you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That's the one that's saying with a smile on his face, it's okay, you got to sin a little bit every day. It's okay, you can't be perfect. God, Jesus is the only one that was ever perfect. Do you know, according to the writings of the Bible, if you looked at the flesh man, Jesus Christ, he wasn't perfect? He broke the law. Do you know that? He touched a dead body. That was against the law. Jesus went out and ate with unwashed hands with his disciples on the Sabbath. That was against the law. So in the, in the fleshly realm, this is why the Levitical priesthood was so against him. They said, you can't be God because you break the law. Come on. Come on. He had liberty. He wasn't a breaker of the law. He was the law giver. Huh? He was perfect in everything. He healed the blind man, raised up Jairus' daughter, walked down there at the pool of Bethesda, troubled the water. There's no telling who that he walked up to that day and was wanting to touch them and to heal them, but only one would hear what he had to say. The Bible said if you could be if it could be written down everything that he actually done, the books could not contain what this man had done. He wanted everyone to be made well and whole and healed. He said, I would that all would be saved. None would be lost. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer per- persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. For, brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. What does liberty do? Sets you free. These young men that we've got preaching for us, I gave them a word the other day. You that, that don't 
understand preaching, there's times when I don't even feel liberty in this own church. There's times when you go out and you minister in other places, you don't have liberty. Huh? So I told these young men, and I'll tell you young men, that, that God may call to do something, take liberty with you. Take authority with you. Make sure that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ works in your life. And you take it with you. And don't worry about it if they give you permission, if they give you authority, if they give you power, if they give you liberty. You take your liberty. You stand up for God and do what the Lord Jesus tells you to do. If he tells you to heal the sick or if he tells you to shut the door, whatever Jesus tells you, be at liberty to do it. The Bible said obedience is better than sacrifice. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Don't use liberty to reach out malice against your neighbors, to talk about them, to backbite them. That's evil. That's conscious. That's, that's everything against what God is doing. Learn to love one another. The Bible said in one place, nobody's ever hated their self and loved someone else. They loved their self. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. You talking about somebody? Somebody's going to talk about you. You putting somebody down? Somebody's going to put you down. You crucifying them? They're going to crucify you. Just rest assured, whatever you dish out, make sure you can take it. This I say then, verse 16. Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Huh? Thank you, You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about breaking the law. If you're being led, but you think that God's going to do anything that's not right? Huh? How could He be a holy and just God and do wrong? How could He lead you in the wrong direction if He is a holy and just God? So if you're led by the Spirit, you become what? Those that are led by the Spirit become the sons of God. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery. You know what that is? Yes, yeah, sir, brother, that's having an affair. You need to go study your word a little bit. It's taking what doesn't belong to you. You hear me? It's taking what does not belong. You know what got David in trouble? Think about the story. When the priest come unto David, he said, David, I'm going to tell you this story. There was a man that had all kind of little lambs. And there was another man that only had one little lamb, and that man that had a bunch of little lambs took his one little lamb. What should we do, David? He said, cut his head off, kill him. He said, well, David, you're the very one. He said, oh, my God, now I see what I've done. He took what was not his. That's what adultery is, taking what does not belong to you. What do you mean, Brother Greg? You get some young lady coming into church. She comes up and she bows down and she cries her heart out. She gets serious before God. Nobody's come to her. No elderly women's come to her. They've not talked to her about what looks proper on a young lady and what doesn't look proper. And the next thing you know, they start treating her like an outcast. They start putting her to shame. They backbite and talk about behind her back. 
They do everything but help pick her up and make a lady out of her. That's adultery because you just stole God from her. You just took the Lord from her. You just took her liberty from her. You just took everything. Same thing with a young man that comes up. He doesn't know anything. He's just a novice. And you begin to ridicule him and put him down and get behind a pulpit and dog him out like some kind of beast. You just committed adultery. You took God from him. He don't want nothing else to do with the church. He doesn't want anything. If that can be of God, then I don't want no part of it. That's adultery. Taking something that doesn't belong to you. Pornification. We done covered pornification. Everybody remember what that is? Mixed breeding. Pornification is mixing the world with God and thinking that it's okay. You cannot take other religions and mix it with the Word of God. You cannot take all the Babylonian system and mix it with the church of Israel. You cannot do it. You have to keep pure things pure. You have to eat the whole Lamb of God. Uncleanness. You know what that is? Not being pure whatsoever is not what entereth the body, it defiles the body, but what proceedeth out of it. Lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Check yourself. Are you guilty of these kind of things? How can you walk into perfection when you still got bad things on? Come on. Huh? Yeah, sure. There's a thing called food allergies. And let's say that you have a wheat condition. If you eat wheat, you're allergic to it. It causes problems. How do you keep from having problems with that? Abstain from it. Don't eat it. Don't be caught in it. If you keep dabbling around with it, you're going to keep being sick. Huh? If you keep dabbling around with things, it's going to keep you messed up. You keep dabbling around in the world and sin, it's going to bite you. It's going to get you. You cannot play with it. And we've been caught so long playing with sin that we are diseased from it. Now God's wanting to work a healing. He's wanting to work something powerful. And he's starting off with just a few people in this church. Now he's all over the country. I'm not saying this is the only place that this is being preached. I'm saying right here it's just a few of us that's coming together to be revived, to be rejuvenated, to be uh, prolonged in this world, to reach to a higher standing, a higher calling, an elevated mind of God. I have also told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. You know what that just said? If you're doing everything that there is for God, there's no law against it. Huh? You have laws against evil you have laws against murdering you have laws against witchcraft idolatry you have laws against all these others but the pure things of God there is no law so you walk in perfection and the more you walk in it the greater your perfection is the greater your mind is (laughs) 
this be hard on men like me and Brother Matthew. We're driving down the road. Neither one of us got enough patience to overcome very much when it comes to highway. He's a truck driver. I've been a truck driver. I get in a car. I'm, I'm like Brother Ken was talking to me last night. He can't drive right now, and his wife drives him everywhere, and he said, I find myself screaming and hollering more now than when I was doing the driving. But you have someone cut you off. Gets on your nerves a little bit. Well, I don't know how y'all are, but I can tell you how me and Brother Matthew are. We just assumed that God would hurry up and get them out of the world. We don't have long suffering. We, we don't even have short suffering. We don't even have second suffering. No temperance. Our temperance is hot. We got more than plexiglass. It's unbreakable. Now listen. What would do good is for me and Brother Matthew to go, forgive them, Lord. Bite that tongue. Bite that tongue. Bite that tongue. Just forgive them, Lord. Bite that lip. The next thing comes along, you say... <coughs> That's too good. <laughs> Forgive him. Third one comes along, you say, Oh my Lord Jesus. Lord, forgive him. The fourth one comes along, you say, Well, I don't see there's no difference in you and the rest of them. Forgive him, God. By the time the round, the tenth one gets by there, it don't even bother you no more. Huh? You can even say forgive them and really mean what you're saying. Huh? Because you first started your forgiveness in the beginning instead of railing accusations in the very beginning. If we would learn to do these things and find the fruit of the Spirit, love. Love your enemies. Huh? I don't care if it is the preacher. Love your enemies. Joy. You know what brings joy? Love. Happiness. Doing something for someone else instead of backbiting them, instead of putting them down, instead of stabbing them in the back with a knife. Love. Joy. Peace. Long suffering. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. Meekness, temperance against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Got rid of them. Got rid of them. Don't need them no more. They're not part of God. Those things that is causing me to get angry, they're causing me not to walk in perfection. They're causing me not to translate this body. Things that are upsetting me, is causing me not to go further in God. Talking about this president that we've got up there, that we all know God didn't want up there. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something. God did want him in the office. Come on, come on. What else is going to drive to your knees? What else is going to cause you? When you quit griping and grumbling about who's in the White House up there and who's running the Congress, who's running the Senate, and do what the Bible said and pray for your leaders, then God can do something. But we running around like everything's all right. God had to do something. Yes, is he, he is my president. Why? Because God chose to put him in office. May be to straighten my sorry hide up. But whatever the case may be, God allowed it to happen. He chose it to happen. Not just allowed it. He, the Bible says he sets up kingdoms, he tears them down. Instead of praying for our leaders, we rather crucify them. Affections love. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. 
Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Listen, chapter 6. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. How many seriously praying for this young man? trap was laid for him how many of you is ready to restore him back to the faith how many is wanting to watch over him and lift him back up okay brother you made a mistake now let's go on let's, let's, let's build up not tear down okay we're all in agreement with that is that right is that right men I'm talking to the men in here now I'm talking to you men you loved him. You've been fasting this week. You've been on your knees praying this week. You've been talking to one another this week. You've been angry, wanting to rip the jailhouse down this week. You've been praying for him. How many of you pray for the little girl that caused the trap? Huh? How many of us has forgiven her for putting our brother over there? I want you to know something. God has done what God wanted to do. There has to be somebody to be reached in that old Walton County jail cell and Greg wasn't going. Huh? I wasn't going. Hey, I've been, I've been in them doors and they locked behind me and it taught me a lesson. I was there to visit somebody. I sure don't want to go down there and be put in there. But the Lord chose to put somebody in that position. I found out when I quit feeling sorry for myself laying in the hospital and find out who it is I'm supposed to be witnessing to, praying for and talking to, then I get to get out of the hospital and quit feeling sorry for myself. The Lord puts you in situations. Quit griping and grumbling about it and be proud that he chose you to do a job because he could have just let you went to hell. So how many of us has prayed to lift up the little girl? Oh, we count her off as an old whore, slut, no count, trash, you think that's God? Huh? Where's God in that? People walk in this church, no whore, no slut, trash, no account, don't know how to dress. And you don't know how to do nothing but put them in hell because that's where you're at. We got to get away from this kind of stuff. You cannot walk into perfection when you're doing this to your brothers and sisters. Do you know who kills the Christians of the world? So-called Christians. You think that you think why Satan is always battling Christians? He ain't got to worry about his own. They're not doing nothing. It's we're the ones that's causing the trouble. If I'm upset with you, brother, how can I walk in perfect? I'm better than you are. I got a purple tie on, and that's royalty. We both got a sort of a blue shirt on. Mine, I don't know what mine is, sort of awkward. Yours a little bit more blue. You're probably more manly than mine is. I'm just more of a man that I can wear mine. But I'm wearing a purple tie. Huh? And if I have confliction with you or friction in there how can I be healed when I've got trouble when I can't find love to love one another but yet we want to go on further with God and we won't eat all of God I got something to eat, and bless God, if you had anything, you'd have something to eat. Now, you just do without then. Huh? Unfortunately, I know a man that said that. He's in the grave. He's sitting there with all kind of money laid out on his desk, the story was told. And he told his church people, if, if God bless y'all, y'all could go out and eat, but we're going to go out and eat. And he let his church people do without. And you know what? It was their money that was laying on the, t- on the desk blessing him. But you want to know what? He's in the graveyard. 
Huh? Listen, we've got to love one another. If, when I was a kid, if I didn't have but two or three dollars on me and I stopped at Crystal's, we got every crystal that that money would buy and we all split it if we had to break the crystal in half. Now you think I'm joking, but that actually happened. I'm not doing nothing without sharing if I can at all share. We've got to learn to take all of God and not just part of it. We cannot be beneficial if we don't benefit. We cannot receive benefits if we don't give benefits. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his what? His own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth of the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap ever or life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. As we have therefore the opportunity, let us do good unto some of the men. What did it say? Do it unto who? Do it unto Brother Adam? Do it unto Brother Michael? Do it unto Brother Michael? Do it unto... Who? Who? We do it unto all men. All men. Especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Especially them. We ought to treat our brothers and sisters like they're somebody instead of they're, like they're nothing. Amen. We need to let religion get out of our life and let God get in. We need to be translated by the renewing of our mind. And how do we do that? By the washing of the Word daily. Let us go on into perfection, not laying again the foundation of dead works, repentance of sins, baptisms, laying on of hands, healing, you know, these things we can do if God permits. We need to be to a place that we are joined to Gather. Brother Red said that God spoke to him 30 odd years ago. He said, communal, how do you say that? Communal is the way survival. Survival is the law and communal is the way, or something like that. But in, in other words, that we ought to be so concerned about each other that there's nothing that we don't all share. We ought to all have the same money, the same wealth, the same love, the same integrance, the, the same everything that there is. There should not be no one going lacking that is in the household of faith. Not a bum. Not a degenerate. But I'm talking about somebody that loves God. We ought to have enough respect and love for them that we build them above everything. Why? Because by building them, you're going to build yourself. By building character in them, it's going to build character in you. By praying that God bless them, it's going to bless you. By blessing them, it's going to bless you. Daddy always said you'll never, ever, ever pay your way out of debt. You can give your way out of debt, but you'll never pay your way out of debt. We've got to come to the place that we go back one more time now. You've got to eat all of God. All of Him. The whole lamb. You roast every bit of Him. The eyes. Do you know why? They ate all of the lamb. They didn't throw nothing away. Nothing was thrown away. The eyes, the brains, the ears, everything that if you had a trouble in your life, that's what you ate of. If I had trouble 
with intestinal trouble. I would eat part of the intestines. You might have trouble with the liver. You'd eat part of the liver. You may have muscle spasms and you would eat part of the strong meat. But everybody of what they had trouble with when they ate the lamb uh, uh, in the Passover time, they ate the portion that would benefit them to make them whole again. What is it that we are not eating? Well, Brother Greg, I ain't going to eat that. You don't want to be made whole? I, I just can't do that. You've got to eat it all. Eat every bit of it, every page. The Bible says it's going to be sweet to your mouth, but guess what? It's going to be bitter to your stomach. The Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting even to the mire of the bone. It's going to rip you apart. If the Word of God is not tearing you to pieces, you're not right with God. Huh? Because it ought to be tearing you from limb to limb. Amen. Amen. But guess what? When it gets through cutting you, you're made whole. You ain't got to worry about that no more. It's sweet. Yeah. You just got to get to that next part that's bitter. And then it'll cleanse you out. It'll make you whole. It'll do these things. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Don't allow religious men to hide the cross from you. Just because we stand behind holy desk and sacred desk, don't look at that man any longer and let him hide the cross from your vision. Overlook men because until they have put on perfection, they're going to have false doctrine in them. I don't care. It's going to be that way. Brother Michael, whether it's you or whether it's me, we still got false doctrine. Brother Thomas, you got some false doctrine. Until we all reach perfection, until we all make the translation. And you know when you make it, you've got rid of the false doctrine. And you become pure and holy because you ate all the Word of God. So overlook the man and look to the cross and you'll find the true Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody need anything tonight? If you do, just stand to your feet, come down. We'll pray. And not only will we pray, but the Bible said, if you believe, ask anything, and it might not be in a mist, if you would just believe, He would do what you asked Him to do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the most gracious Heavenly Father, King of kings, Lord of lords. Beside you there is none other, and I wouldn't want another God. Lord, you're what has true, proven to be true, proven to be strong, proven to be everlasting, pure, proven to be pure and holy. Lord, the rest is just imitation. Lord, please take the false doctrine out of me. Lord, take hatred out of me. Take all this idolatry out of me. Lord, take all this impurities out of my system, God. Cleanse my blood. Make it whole. Make it fresh. Make it clean before you, God. Open up my eyes of revelation that I can see what you are trying to reveal in this day to sustain me and force me to walk into that day. Lord, we give you all the honor, glory, and the praise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyone need anything? Father, you see, Dad, Lord, he has blazed this trail. Lord, if it wouldn't have been for him, the lighthouse might not be standing on this hill. Lord, had he not brought children in here to give life back to this old building, she would have fell down years and years ago. Lord, his old storms had just about tossed it to and fro when we come, God. But, Lord, because one man loved this community, God, you have restored it. Lord, we ask you now to restore his body, for he restored a place of safety and security for the children, God, whether they choose to come or don't. 
He gave his life. God, we ask you to restore this shoulder, this shoulder blade. Take the bruising out. Take the pain, the aggravation out. God, touch that kneecap, Lord. The one that the doctors cut on, Lord, let this, even let the scar tissue be gone and let it be made whole in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, made perfect by the revealing of you in that name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the church said, Amen. Anyone else? All right. In the morning, 9.45. Is that right? Give the Lord a hand clap. Don't just look at me. Give the Lord a hand clap like you mean it. Come on. At this time, we'll take up a, a collection of 